welcome to part one to my guide of Good Omens because Good Omens is coming out on the 31st of May and I am so excited for this TV show. I've never been so excited for a TV show in my life and so what I thought I'd do is talk to you guys all about the TV show and the book to get as many people to watch it and read this book as possible because I feel like all of you guys are missing out. So this is going to be a mini series that covers the book and the TV show in various ways. This first video is going to be a guide to the book and what to look out for in the TV show. The next video is going to be the cast breakdown because this cast gives me a breakdown with how good it is. The next video is going to be all about the authors themselves and what books to check out on both of them. And my final video is either going to be a reading vlog of me reading Good Omens for the Good Omens read along or my reaction to the TV show. Either way, I will still be reviewing the TV show. It will just probably be on my blog if it's not on here. So without any further ado, here is my guide to Good Omens, the book, and the things to look out for in the TV show. Good Omens is a book by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman, first published in 1990. And since then it has created this huge Princess Bride-like cult following that I can't even comprehend and considering that this book was published when only like three Discworld novels were out and Neil Gaiman was only known as a comic book writer is incredible it basically launched their careers into the stratosphere in book writing it also made them worldwide names with this book and it has just lasted for 29 years and is still a huge huge thing to a lot of people so what is it actually all about well it says on the back here According to the nice and accurate prophecies of Agnes Nutter, which the world's only totally reliable guide to the future, written in 1655, before she exploded, the world will end on a Saturday. Next Saturday, in fact. Just after tea. People have been predicting the end of the world almost from its very beginning, so it's only natural to be sceptical when a new date is set for Judgment Day. This time, though, the armies of good and evil really do appear to be massing. The four bikers of the apocalypse are hitting the road, but both angels and demons, well, one fast-living demon and one somewhat fussy angel, would quite like the rapture not to happen. Oh, and someone seems to misplace the Antichrist. This book really is about Crowley the demon and Aziraphale the angel as they try to team up together somewhat reluctantly despite the fact they've been somewhat friends for 6,000 years as they try to stop the apocalypse. They just don't know where the Antichrist is. Meanwhile, the Antichrist himself is coming into his powers but has no idea what's going on and is causing havoc around the world. The four horsemen of the apocalypse who are actually riding motorbikes are also going to the Antichrist to help him out to stop the world and also Agnes Nutter's descendants are also trying to follow her prophecies to stop the apocalypse. It sounds really complicated but I swear it isn't. I mean, in Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett we trust, right? And if an idiot like me can get this then I guarantee you, you will as well. It's a really quick, easy, simple read that is just absolutely brilliant. You're probably wondering why this is so funny and that's simply because Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman have written it and they have this beautiful sense of humour that I absolutely adore. What I will say though is that this is slightly blasphemous so if you are religious I would say go into this slightly cautiously because there are a few moments where it does poke fun at religion so if you want to be happy with that I would say really stay away from this book but if not this is a really fun book to read because while it is blasphemous it's not poking absolute huge holes in religion this is based quite a lot on christianity and the apocalypse which is really good fun and where the humor really sort of comes from is from crowley and aziraphale and the other characters in this story getting into ridiculous situations to try and stop the apocalypse or what the antichrist is actually doing or whatever's happening with the four horsemen and it's just situations come from it that are really funny i swear it it's just it's Terry Pratchett, guys. Of course it's funny. It's Terry Pratchett. He was like Douglas Adams of this era. He's amazing. Now, I will be talking more about the characters themselves along with their actors in the next video. But right now, what I wanted to do was tell you a few in-jokes from the book so you can kind of see what kind of humour it is along with what you should look out for in the TV show. I'll start first by saying that there's a link down below to the trailer if you want to watch it first because, to be honest, you may be slightly confused. And if you watch the trailer, you'll get a sort of 
idea of where I'm coming from with this story. The first thing I'm going to say is why the TV show was made because the TV show has been nearly made multiple times. It's nearly been made into a film multiple times, but for some reason it's always fallen through. But when Terry Pratchett was on his deathbed, he made Neil Gaiman and promised that when it was eventually adapted, he would do it right and he would do it exactly like they'd always dreamt and planned it to. So Neil Gaiman in response has show run the show, written all of the scripts and everything else to do with the TV show to make it as accurate as possible to Terry's wishes and what he also wanted for the adaption. So it's sort of like a tribute to Terry Pratchett as well as finally making this cult classic into an actual TV show that people can watch. So when you watch the TV show there's a couple of things you need to look out for. The first one is Terry Pratchett's hat because Terry Pratchett's hat is going to be in a Zero Fails bookshop because Terry Pratchett obviously was such a famous author he co-wrote this book and Neil Gaiman decided to put Terry Pratchett's hat in the Zero Fails like shop just to honour him that little bit more his hat's going to be on a stand next to a bookshelf filled with Terry Pratchett books I don't know if we're going to get a close-up shot of this or not but it is going to be in there. Also, originally in the infamous sushi scene in the book, when it was adapted, Terry and Neil were originally going to be in the background of this shot, but Neil Gaiman decided against it now because he couldn't do it with Terry. So that's why they also put the hat in, just as a little nod to Terry. Also on set, they had a chair set out for Terry Pratchett as well, which is a really nice touch. So he was still sort of there in his own way, which I really like that detail. Also, I'm now going to jump slightly to pronunciation here because Crowley is pronounced Crowley and I've been pronouncing it as Crowley for about two years now because I'm a massive fan of Supernatural or at least I was a massive fan of Supernatural. I still like the show but I'm not as into it as I was because they killed off Crowley and screwed it up. If you've watched Supernatural, you know what I'm on about. But the thing is, is that Crowley and Crowley are spelled the exact same way. So I've been pronouncing Crowley as Crowley for the last two years. But from Neil Gaiman, he has said that it's pronounced Crowley. So it is Crowley. But if I ever say Crowley in the middle of a video or anything, I do mean Crowley. I'm about to show just how old this book is. But if you watch the trailer and then the TV show, you will also notice that there's a lot of Queen playing. Now, the reason for this is that there's a running joke throughout the entire book that if you leave a cassette tape, that's how I'm telling you how old this book is. If you leave a cassette tape in a car for more than two weeks, no matter what it is, it will turn into Queen's greatest hit. Nobody knows why. It just happens. It's the law of the universe. So every single time Crowley puts a cassette tape into his classic Bentley, Queen plays. No matter what he does, Queen will play. No matter what year Crowley is in or whatever, if he puts a cassette tape into the car, Queen plays. Which comes to some very hilarious situations with what songs plays at certain points. Also, it does mean that every single time a minion of hell speaks to him through the radio, it does sound like Freddie Mercury, which is also quite funny. I don't know how they're going to do that in the TV show. I don't know if they'll skip over that bit or what, but at the same time, I'm really excited to see how they do that. When you watch the TV show, you will notice that there's a lot of added bits into the TV show that weren't in the book. Now, this isn't the showrunner or the writer or anything going nuts. This is Neil Gaiman who wrote and showrun the show putting in extra bits that were originally planned for a sequel so for example the archangel gabriel is in the tv show but he isn't in the book but he was going to be in a planned sequel that was never written so that's why when you read the book then watch the tv show when there's added extra bits it was just going to be in the sequel that they've put in because just because it was the best way to do it so when you watch the tv show and notice all these extra bits they were all going to be in the sequel that was sadly never written i'm quite glad about it though because even though i really like keeping my books nice and accurate in the tv adaptions i'm quite glad that this is all coming off of sequel ideas so they're not just coming from random and they were actually discussed between terry and neil so i'm all counting it as canon in the book universe also if you're a doctor who fan you are going to love good omens because this obviously stars david tennant there's a whole load of other characters in this who are played by Doctor Who actors which is awesome also they have deliberately put a whole ton of Doctor Who references into the TV show I don't know why they just decided to do it I think it's because half of the crew and everything have worked on Doctor Who and Sherlock so they've shoved a whole load of Doctor Who references in there I think there's a couple of Sherlock references in there as well but don't quote me on that and they have challenged fans to see if you can catch all the Doctor Who references and I've gone challenged accepted because I am a Doctor Who nerd. I am a massive Whovian so 
I am very excited to see just what they've put in. They've already revealed one of them and that is that Newton Pulsifer's tie is going to be like the fourth Doctor's scarf. But apart from that, we know nothing. So when we get to the TV show, there's going to be a whole load of references that I'm so excited to scream over. Also, speaking on Doctor Who, you'll also notice that Crowley is Ginger and Crowley is played by David Tennant. What was David Tennant's 10th Doctor's favourite thing to complain about? The fact that he wasn't Ginger. And that just makes me howl with laughter because it means that finally the 10th Doctor is Ginger. And I don't know if that was deliberately a reference or what, but I'm just so, so happy that I finally get to make the 10th Doctor who's finally Ginger jokes the whole way through the TV show. And I'm sure David Tennant found it quite funny as well because he did actually physically dye his hair Ginger, which was absolutely gorgeous for quite a while while they were filming even though he was wearing hair extensions and wigs for half of the show as well during all of these sort of other time periods that aren't set now so that was really good fun and i'm so so happy that he finally gets to be ginger my nerdy heart is soaring with that news i'm so happy he gets to be ginger and that is basically everything i can tell you about good omens without spoiling any huge major plot points or anything like that so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do give me a thumbs up comment down below with what you thought when you first read good omens and what you thought when you first saw the trailer or if i've missed any of the trivia or anything i'd love to know that down below because i hate missing trivia on stuff like this so please let me know down below i'll also leave a link down below to all of my social media if you want to check it out and if you want to see any more of my good omens videos please click subscribe here and over here will be the link to my previous video but until next time guys bye